In this video, we're going to create an event and set up tickets for a single day conference. We'll be using the main free events for WooCommerce plugin, as well as the free events custom attendee fields extension and the free events PDF ticket extension. All of these plugins can be purchased on freeevents.com. So how free events works is it adds events and ticketing functionality to WooCommerce products. So to get started, we'll head over to WooCommerce in the admin menu and add a new product. So once the page loads, enter the title and complete all the standard WooCommerce fields, such as the description. We're going to set a product image. We're also going to complete any categories. These are all the standard WooCommerce fields that you should be accustomed to if you've used WooCommerce in the past. So next we're going to head over to the product data tabs and we're going to add variations. So in three events, we use variations to add different ticket types. This is used in scenarios where you'd maybe need each ticket to be sold at a different price and maybe you want to limit stock for each of those different ticket types. So set the product as a variable product and then head over to attributes. Here you can set the name of the attribute. We're going to call it ticket type and we're going to create three different types, a standard, a delicate and a VIP. We save that, head over to variations and we're going to generate our three variations. And then for each of these, all we need to do is ensure that they downloadable, virtual, and we're going to manage stock. And then you enter the price and stock quantity for each of them. So this is going to give us three different ticket types, each with a different price and stock amount. We're then going to head over to the event settings tab and complete the general event settings. So the first thing I'm going to do is make sure that this product behaves as an event. In the first field, we ask the question, is this product an event? Here you need to change that drop down to yes. And we're going to leave the event type as single. The single option will make sure that the event only happens on a single day. This is ideal for a show that happens once or a conference that only happens on a single day. If your event spans over multiple days, so perhaps a three day conference or a 10 day music festival, then you could use the sequential days option or the specific days option. Those are available as part of the free events multi-day plugin. If your event is a bookable event, so it happens over many dates at different time slots, you can use the bookable option, but you'll need the free events bookings extension for that. And last but not least, if your event has seating options and your customers need to select a seat, you'll use the seating option, which is also available as part of the free events seating extension. We're then going to complete the start date, start time, end time, and time zone for this event. This is the day that the event will occur, the time that it starts, the time that it ends, and then your time zone to make sure that your customers will receive the correct information. Next, we're going to complete the general information for the event. So that's the venue, the GPS coordinates, which your attendees can use to find the exact location, the Google Maps coordinates. These are going to be used in the Google Map that's displayed on the product page. On a side note, remember to configure the Google Maps integration by going to the free events global settings. So you go to free events in the menu, hit settings and go to integration. And you'll need to enter your Google Maps uh, integration details over there first. Once you've done that, come back here, enter the coordinates and the map will display on the front end. We're then gonna enter the directions, the phone number and the email address that'll be displayed to your attendees. This is typically the email address of the event organizer or your help center. You can then enter a message that will be displayed on the thank you page. The thank you page is displayed after checkout once the order has been completed and the tickets have been generated. If you're using the free events calendar, you can display this event in your calendar and using these two options, you can set the background color and text color that the label will display. We're then going to set this event to capture the full name, email address, phone number and company name. You can also review some of the other settings and see which ones are relevant to your event. We're not using seating, so I'll quickly disable this option before we browse over the remaining ones. So next we're going to configure our ticket. To do that, we're going to go to ticket settings and set the default ticket theme as well as the PDF ticket theme. We're then going to choose a logo to display on the ticket 
and a header image that will display on the ticket. You can customize the ticket email subject. So this is the subject line that will display as part of the email and you can customize it to your event name or any message that you think will grab your attendees attention. And you can also enter a additional message in the ticket email body. This is usually a thank you message or further instructions for the day of the event. You can then scroll down and go through the remaining settings and configure them as needed for your event. We're going to set us to display custom attendee details on the ticket and I'll show you shortly how to set up those custom attendee fields. We are also going to set it to display the price on the ticket. And lastly, we're going to set it to email the tickets to the attendees rather than the purchaser. So by default, the purchaser will receive a single ticket with all the various attendee tickets combined into one. But I'm going to set this so that each attendee will receive a separate ticket email. This will of course be dependent on your preference and your use case. And lastly, make sure the email tickets option is enabled. All right, so let's head over to the custom attendee fields tab and create a new custom attendee field called t-shirt size. So when the customer completes the checkout process on the checkout page, they'll be able to set the t-shirt size for each individual attendee. This information will then be included in the ticket and you'll be able to view it in the back end of your website. This is a great way to capture information about your attendees in preparation for your event. Once we've done that, we're going to head over to the expiration settings and we're going to set the event and ticket expirations. This is optional, but very useful for managing your event and ticket check-ins. So the first option we're going to enter is the date that the event will expire. After this date, customers will no longer be able to purchase tickets for this particular event. You can also display an expiration message to your attendees explaining why they are no longer able to purchase a ticket. And this just helps them stay informed. We're then going to set the ticket expiration. So this will ensure after the specified date, the ticket no longer be able to check in at the event. Once we're done, we're going to publish the event and then we're going to view it on the front end of the website by clicking the view product option. So for the most part, this is a standard WooCommerce product. The beauty of that is it will display perfectly provided your theme supports WooCommerce. So you won't need to customize templates or modify it to look good. It should work perfectly right out the gate. So let's go through the ticket purchase process. First thing you'll do is select your ticket type and then you'll hit the book now button. You then proceed to the cart. You can review your order and proceed to checkout. So for the most part, the checkout screen is a standard WooCommerce checkout screen where you'll enter your billing details and you can review your order. The main difference is that Foo Events also adds an attendee details section based on your configuration. So if we scroll down to the bottom of the page, you'll see that we'll capture attendee information for each stock item. So if you've added three tickets to your cart, you'll see attendee one, two, and three. Here you'll complete the name, last name, email address, telephone number, company, and you'll select a t-shirt size. You can also use the copy purchaser info link to automatically copy the purchaser's details into these fields, saving you time if necessary. You can also disable this option or customize it in the global Foo event settings. Once you've captured all the fields, we're going to place the order. So this is a demo site, so we just have a mock payment method set up, so we're going to need to enter credit card details. But on your site, you'll implement your favorite payment gateways and your customers would enter their payment details here. It'll then generate the Foo Events ticket and direct them to the thank you page. Once the thank you page is loaded, you'll see the order information as well as our custom thank you message. So let's head back to the dashboard and go to orders to view this latest order we just created. So you'll see it looks like a standard WooCommerce order. And if we open it, you'll see the billing information 
product information as well as the ticket details. You can click on the ticket ID number and this will take you to the ticket edit screen. Here you can view all the information about the ticket as well as download the PDF ticket and modify the ticket information. You can also view the order details and purchase the details and you can resend the ticket to the attendee or custom email address if needed. Let's head over to our test email account and view the ticket. We'll see the logo, the header image, event information, as well as the ticket stub, which includes a QR code and all the captured ticket information. You can also view a PDF version of the ticket, which includes the same layout and template. So each individual attendee will receive a copy of an email with their details on it. If we chose the option to send these tickets to the purchaser, they could all be combined in a single ticket email with all the stubs listed below each other. And that concludes how to create an event using Foo Events. If you require further information, please visit our website and go to help.fooevents.com for more detailed instructions. Thanks for watching.